hello to the first part of a multi-part series about developing for the Bitwig controller API. So writing extensions and scripts which can do new things with Bitwig and support controllers and we will see what else. Why I'm doing that? I did a first workshop about developing your controller which you could bring to at the super booth early this year in 2018 and meanwhile also a lot of people ask me on the kvr forum hey i want to do the same cool stuff you do how do i start is there any documentation or material so i thought okay why not and let's start doing it so this is now the first part where we will start very easy it's just a little bit introduction and some pointers to resources which can get you started and which can also be very helpful for reference let's dive into it First and most important question, do you really need or want to program? If you are here for making music, don't start with that at all, because you will waste hours and days and months and even years with these things. If you can get around it, why not get around it? So what are your options if you want to have a lot of flexibility but don't want to program? As I guess you know, there is the Driven by Moss extension I am developing, which provide support for mostly all of the important controllers on the market so you can directly use it but it also contains two extensions which are very flexible so the first one is the support for open sound control which is an open protocol and uh, i put into the implementation of that protocol so the specific commands you can execute a lot of features of bitwig so if you have a client for example like touch oc or things like that you can send and control a lot of features of Bitwig by using OC. Another option is if you just want to support a controller with some knobs or buttons but you don't have a very specific script for it you can use the generic Flexi which is also part of Driven by Moss and there are also tutorials about it which allows you to map different functions and features for your controller so this should also keep you going. Okay, if you say no, that's not what I'm into and I want to learn or maybe if just for the sake of it, I love to program and develop and I want to dive into it. Why even write such an extension or a script? The thing is you can control most of this, not everything, but most of the Bitwig via this API. And it's not only for controllers, so you can also write and extend new functionality. For example, you could generate chords or... Yeah, whatever. It's up to your creativity, whatever you might come up. And the important thing is, uh, because for example, Bitwig also has the option to directly map buttons and knobs to specific functions, but this is only always available for your current uh, document or your current project. And with a script or extension, this functionality is always there when you start Bitwig. Okay, what is the baseline? So there are two options, two programming languages, which we can use to develop for this uh, API. The first one is JavaScript, which is pretty well known, I guess, from web-based development, if you are into that. And Java, which is one of the most uh, used languages on the market. And yeah, JavaScript, as the name implies, is more like a scripting language. So this has mostly drawbacks because debugging is not that easy and uh, Java is much more powerful in that regard but you need I think a higher skill level to use that and also setting it up and keep it going is a bit more difficult than just simply writing JavaScript. Okay, so if you know a bit about JavaScript, at least you should know what an if command is, what a while command is, for for loops, how functions work, and these things. If you have no idea about that, first go and at least learn the basics of a language, how you write code, experiment with that, and then come back here. <laughs> So another very important message I think is there is no such thing than an easy code or I write just a simple easy script in a couple of lines. This will never happen. It will very very quickly become longer and you have new ideas and you want to extend the script. And so from the beginning look at writing quality code. 
Also document your code. Don't write lengthy functions. Try to split it up. Also use the source code repository. Also, if you have no idea what it is, I will not give you a computer science course here. So learn that stuff first, look it up. One very good thing to do is maybe use GitHub because it's free for open source projects. Also a lot of Bitwig extension projects are hosted there as well, including my Driven by Moss extension. So this is a good starter. And all the other development do's and don'ts, which I will not teach you in here, but, but there are also many excellent courses on, on YouTube, how you nowadays do development with JavaScript. So look up these things on the net. Okay, so you have a basic skill set now. Where else can you find documentation and helpful for looking up or to get you going or you're looking for, for answers to a specific problems? Where can you go? First, you can start in Bitwig itself because it comes with basic introduction but the problem with that is it's a little bit old it's only written for version one of bitwig but nevertheless it's still a very good overview there are some differences now in version two which i will also talk about later on in other parts of this tutorial but nevertheless it gives you the basic ideas and the second thing coming with Bitwig is the full API documentation. I use that word quite a lot. If you have no idea what that means, you are also wrong here. But nevertheless, it's the application programming interface. And the good thing about it is you can also search in it and you find these two things in the Bitwig help settings on the developer resources. And I can also show you that. If you start Bitwig, you can click here to get to the settings. And if you go to help and then you see on the left, there is documentation and then you need to scroll down to the bottom and then you see here developer resources and this is the scripting guide I was talking about we can also open that so you see it's still in the version one red and logo but as I said nevertheless it's a quite a good read and a starter for keep you going and still what is written in there is still working also in version two but in version two there are nicer ways to implement such things in Bitwig as I said you can also access the controller API reference every command and every object you can use in access is documented it also names here always the version that you are looking at and what is worth noting is that the controller api is now no longer counted by the version number of Bitwig, but instead it has its own version numbering. So the current API version of 2.4 is API version 7. And if you scroll down, you see also the history and see what has changed in the different versions and what new functions you have and what got added or fixed. As I said, it's searchable. So here you can also say, for example, I'm looking for a name function and you see there is one and you can also then click and see where this is if you're searching for a specific feature and have no idea where that is you can use that feature as well also maybe worth a look what is in there in the api so there is some introduction and there is as i said this history thing of the different api version also important deprecated list so some api levels say okay functions are no longer supported or should not be used and especially if you enforce to check for that your script will crash and tell you that you're using a deprecated function more on that also later and then there are all the classes that are available and you can dive into that here as well that's a little bit of not so nice that you have to click in there and go in there and maybe sometime you find something so there we see for the class and all the available commands and also the documentation okay so much much for the API and there are further resources not included in Bitwig. So the first thing to go to if you're looking for answers or have a question, have no idea or you got stuck, you can go on the KVR forum for the Bitwig scripting. It's a sub forum of the official Bitwig forum and there you find answers and a lot of discussion about development and I'm also there so I can also answer your questions there. Second good resource is my source code for the Driven by Moss extension. I guess you can find nearly all of the functions and features that the API provides in there. But please, if you copy larger chunks from there, respect the LGPL license under which are licenses, which means always point to uh, my name, so the author, and also to where the original code is located, and then it's fine for your use. Well, let's first jump down there. Maybe there are also other sources, for example, 
all the scripts coming with Bitwig Studio for different controllers. And also on GitHub, you find much more extensions than only mine. Search for Bitwig on GitHub, you will find lots of examples as well. But as I said, like before, always respect the copyright and see what copyright those people, those authors of the source code, put it out for your use. And there is also, especially if you're developing in JavaScript, so Driven by Mossy is written in Java, but if you're looking in JavaScript, I did a framework for that before, which is located here, together with Theo Graphics, that's why it's on his GitHub page. And um, it's for JavaScript, it's not up to date, it's, uh, I'm not sure, I think I did not update it for two, so it's still also version one, but nevertheless, if you do JavaScript, you see a lot of tricks in there, how to develop with JavaScript for Bitwig. So quite some stuff to see there. Final page already for this first part is how does it actually work? What is this thing? So this image is copied from uh, this introduction document. And on the right, you see the host application, which in our case is always Bitwig Studio. What can you do uh, with Bitwig Studio to control this? Here we have the API and here we have a controller script or talking about naming. Now in the current version, it's called an extension because you can also write it in Java. So it's the idea as the name implies extension. It's not only for control controllers, it can be an extension for everything. So everything which you write for uh, Bitwig is called now an extension. And in that example, you see your controller script or extension can then talk to a specific media device or a controller or a keyboard or whatever. But this is optional, this part. This doesn't mean that you have to do that. You can write a controller script or an extension without the need to attach any device at all. For example, I did a very small script, which just automatically sets colors of tracks. Well, that's an example for do something like this. And there are also other options. You don't have to use MIDI. There is also the support to use UDP, which is, for example, the base for, for, for OC as well. Or you can use TCP, but I could not make this work so far because it has a bug in there. So you should go anyway for real-time operation. UDP is much better than using TCP. Also, uh, there is uh, OSC as a protocol is in there since Bitwig 2.3. So don't get confused. Open sound control. OSC C just means the protocol. It does not define any commands, for example, like uh, starts the transport. This is not defined in OSC. You have to do this yourself. And that's what I did in my OSC implementation, which comes as part of Driven by Moss. And since Bitwig 2.4, there is also USB support. So you can also talk to USB devices, which is very, very powerful. For example, if you want to use a mouse or a joystick or whatever, or uh, talk to a display uh, of a device, which is which can be accessed via USB, you have now all these options in there. So already a quite long introduction without writing any code at all. We finished part one and we will get our hands dirty in a second part and write some funky code. <laughs>